Good afternoon. Welcome to EduSet Network. Friend, this week we have a lecture on history. Today we are start with ancient history. We will talk about the Vedic periods. The Vedic periods last 1500 BC to 1000 BC. If we consider from today, it's about 3500 back to 3000 uh, years back. So the history is about uh, of 500 years. We will talk in one hour. That is not possible. So we will just concentrate on the principal uh, nature or uh, details description, which was the uh, you can say representative of that time. We'll talk about the uh, nature of society and economy of the period, Rig Vedic period, and then uh, in another lecture we'll talk about later Vedic period, that is from 1000 BC to 500 BC. So today we'll concentrate on Rig Vedic period, and for discussion on this very topic, we have in the studio Dr. O.P. Singh. He is associate professor of history and presently. Uh, he teaches history in Delhi College of Arts and Commerce and have about uh, 15 years of experience and area of hospitalization in ancient history. So on your behalf, I welcome Dr. Singh for a recent lecture on this topic, uh, Society and Economy of Rig Vedic Period. Welcome you, sir. Thank you, Amrindraji. Thank you so much. Uh, today we are going to discuss the society and economy of Rig Vedic Period the chronology for which is about 1500 BC to 1000 BC. Now, as far as the sources for this period are concerned, we have primarily Rig Veda as the main source or the literary source. Apart from it, we have some very few archaeological remains of the Rig Vedic region, but they are hardly sufficient. Though those sources can be used to substantiate some of the inferences that can be drawn on the basis of Rig Veda. <coughs> now, as far as Rig Vedic economy is concerned, it was primarily and predominantly pastoral in nature. This can be said on the basis of evidence that can be witnessed in contemporary sources. For example, we have direct references of cattle in six mandalas of the Rig Veda, which are of the Rig Vedic period. Apart from it, we have prayers in the Rig Veda to gate Praja and Pasu, Praja of course children and Pasu cattle. Now, among cattle, cow was their most important wealth cow which has been referred to as go or gau in the Rig Veda and importance of the cow can be seen in the fact that the terms for almost all aspects of the life of the Rig Vedic people has been derived from go or cow. For example, a wealthy person was ca called gomat, the king was called Gopati, king or chief of the tribe was called Gopati. Since it was a pastoral economy and there were always intra-tribal and inter-tribal wars for cattle, so there were, they were frequently against each other for, and there were frequent battles for cows. And so, we have terms like Gavishti, Gavesna, etc. Which, are, which were used for battles and these were basically battles in which they went against each other for cows. <coughs> then some of their relations were also named after the cow, for, uh, it was based on the use of cow. For example, they used to call their daughters Duhitri, now Duhitri is one who milks the cow. So, this can be seen in the fact that cows revolved around almost all aspects of the life of the Rig Vedic people. Now, because of importance of cattle, the pasture land became very important. This pasture land was under communal control and the property, this communal property, communal uh, ownership 
it was also emphasized by the fact that cattle that was obtained during wars was redistributed through various assemblies of Rigvedic times like Vidath and Gana. But all the members did not get an equal share in such a distribution of animals. For example, the leaders, the chiefs of the tribes, their close supporters, their clansmen, their family members, they got a larger share. The priests also got a larger share. And thus, there can be seen a certain inequality in access, in access to cattle wealth because the rulers and the chiefs were getting a larger share as compared to the common people or wis who also took part in these cattle raids or wars for cattle. Now, this process of differentiation in property, which of course was very meager during Rig Vedic times, accentuated in course of time and it became further evident during later Vedic times and post Vedic times. Now, Apart from cattle rearing and uh, wars for cattle and importance of cattle in their life, their another important economic activity was agriculture. Though as far as agriculture is concerned, it is generally believed that their main economic occupation was cattle rearing. But recently, some of the scholars have started suggesting that it should be an over emphasis to suggest that their main economic activity was cattle rearing. They, they also, they also practiced agriculture to a decent limit and that can be uh, seen in the contemporary sources. But as far as this argument is concerned, it needs certain more evidence and more grounds are to be there to conclude that agriculture was an important economic activity. At present, the knowledge that we have, we can suggest that agricultural activity was much more limited as compared to cattle rearing. Now, as far as agriculture is concerned, and this we can suggest, because we do not find any land or grain for which any fight used to take place. There are no disputes related to land, land in which uh, agriculture is performed, nor land is mentioned as an item of gift. No, we have prayers in the Rig Veda to get Praja and Pasu, but we do not have any reference of prayers to obtain land nor chiefs are expected to protect land as they are expected to protect the animal or the cattle. So, this is uh, an evidence on the basis of which it can, it can be suggested that agriculture was not their main economic activity. Nevertheless, there are certain references of agricultural operations and agricultural activities and a few agricultural equipments as well. For example, plows here is referred to in the Rig Veda through various terms. Though the word hull, a term that becomes quite popular in ancient literature, is not there in the Rig Veda, but the terms like Sira, Phal, Sita, Sunu and Langal are there and they have been gathered from a number of places in the Rig Veda, which indicate that they probably performed agriculture to an extent. Now, as far as the remains of plowshares are concerned, we have not been able to discover any remains. Probably the plowshares were made of wood, those have perished. But the terms existing in Rig Veda suggesting of the use of plowshare indicates towards certain amount of agriculture 
of course, it may be limited. Now, as far as the word langal is concerned, it is suggested that probably Aryans learned the practice of agriculture after coming into contact with the local people, because langal is a term that does not occur in any of the Indo-European languages. Langal is a term that is of Munda origin, which was an indigenous tribe and the Aryans when came into contact with the Munda people, the indigenous people, they learned the practice of agriculture. So, this is one significant example to suggest the beginning of agriculture probably after coming into contact with the indigenous people. Now, as far as grains or if they practiced agriculture, what did they produce? If this question is raised, then the contemporary literature that is Rig Veda refers just one term and that is Yava, Y A V A Yava. This is the only grain that is referred in the Rig Veda. Now, this term has been interpreted in different ways. There is one group of scholars who suggest that Yava is a group of grains which consists of various grains, whereas there is another group of scholars which suggest that Yava is basically barley which was produced during Rig Vedic times. Now, as far as barley is concerned, it is more probable that it was as far as Yava is concerned, it was more probable that it was barley, because barley is a grain that ripens in as little as 60 days and it use, I mean it suits the semi nomadic life of the Aryans. It is used for fodder for the animal and food for the human beings and so it was Yava and largely it is believed mostly there is almost an enmity amongst the scholars that Yava that is referred in the Rig Veda is basically barley. Now, as far as ownership of land during Rig Vedic times is concerned for the purpose of agriculture, uh, we have no evidence to suggest that there was any individual ownership of land because the details regarding and also as far as the organization of agriculture is concerned, this is also lacking in the Rig Veda. The details regarding organization of agriculture production are lacking in the literature. It is generally believed that probably Vis was engaged in actual production purpose on common land and Rajanya and Purohit that is the chief of the tribe and the priest of the tribe participated less actively, but they acquired a share of produce in form of voluntary gifts. Now, there is some evidence to suggest that I mean um, this acquisition of the agriculture production in which the priests and the chief did not participate uh, directly, they probably acquired a larger share and it led to the basis of acquisition or accumulation of wealth in the hands of the chief and the priestly class of the society. Now, we have some uh, evidence. Uh, related to crafts production also, though it was a rudimentary economy, the people were li leading a life of semi nomadic, uh, they were leading a so semi nomadic way of life. So, in such a situation, there is not much probability of development of arts and craft activities and such art and craft activities are very sparse, very sparse. Now, here just for uh, the sake of archaeological evidence as far as agriculture is concerned, 
it has been recently suggested that an agricultural field, a plot agricultural field has been discovered in Swat Valley that belongs to 1200-1100 BC that is um, roughly during Rig Vedic times which indicates towards beginning of agriculture or towards the practice of agriculture during later Vedic times. But as far as crafts are concerned, we again do not have much archaeological remains to suggest. And so, not only archaeologically, but even in literature too, it seems that the crafts activities were relatively sparse, very less. Because we do not have any specific activity, we have certain groups in the Rig Veda who indulged in different type of uh, craft activities like the leather worker who is referred as charmakar, the wood worker or the carpenter is referred as rathakar. We have reference of kulal and we have reference of vaya, kulal is the potter and vaya is the weaver etcetera, but there are not much references. Now, what is significant? that these people despite their art, artisanal activities, they were not considered to be of low status in the society. And as far as the use of the term kulal for a potter is concerned, it is again suggested that probably the Aryans learned the art of pottery making after coming into contact with the local population only, because kulal again like langal in the case of plosir. Kulal again is a term that is uh, that is of Munda origin and it again does not find any equivalence, equivalent in Indo-European languages. So, it is suggested that this practice was also learnt by the Aryans after coming into contact with the local population. And these people who of course, indulged in limited artisanal activities were not considered to be of low status in the society. Now, in such a situation when the agriculture was limited, the artisanal activity was very limited rather sparse. Uh, we can suggest that there was a primitive kind of market in which the necessity, necessities or necessary items for the survival of the people were exchanged at a place which cannot be suggested to be a market in purest sense of term. In such a market, there is, I mean, uh, if we talk of the medium of exchange, the best way to suggest the medium of exchange can be barter system, though we have certain terms like niska, which has been suggested to be a coin or money by some scholars. But it is generally believed that the term niska that has been found in the Rig Veda is not used for coins or it does not mean the existence of money economy. Niska was probably a jewelry in gold or silver and probably over a period of time, it also acquired certain values corresponding with some weight, but we are not sure what and how much. Now, apart from it, uh, if we talk about uh, economy and if we talk about artisanal activities, it is generally believed that the Aryans brought the chariot along with them and because of it chariots and of course, horses along with them and because of it they were quite mobile, they were able to move from one place to another place at a very fast pace. We have some evidence to suggest rather it has been suggested by some of the scholars that the introduction of a spoked hill wheels in India was made during Rig Vedic times. Now, reference for uh, such an introduction like Ara or 
Nabhya is there in the Rig Veda in the contemporary literature. But as far as archaeological evidence is concerned, uh, archaeological evidence in India is very poor because we do not find any direct evidence for the use of uh, spoked wheels. We have certain terracotta evidence from Banwali, we have some other evidence uh, from uh, borders of Afghanistan, but those belong to a little earlier date that is post Indus Valley civilization or little earlier too, but nevertheless it is generally believed that the spoke, uh, spoked wheels were introduced by the Aryans in India, the chariots were introduced by the Aryans in India and that led to uh, faster mobility of the Aryans in uh, contemporary situation. Now, as far as uh, use of metals during the Vedic times is concerned, it has been a matter of controversy. Controversy because uh, there is a group of scholars which suggest that the Aryans were using iron. We have a term in the Rig Veda that is ayas which has been interpreted by some scholars as iron. But we have not found any remains of any iron objects that can be dated to Rig Vedic period. Now, it is generally believed that the metal that is mentioned in the Rig Veda, the ayas that is metal that that is a metal and that has been mentioned in the Rig Veda was either copper or bronze because no iron uh, metal is referred in Rig Vedic literature. And even if it was a it was a metal that was copper or bronze, it can be suggested very safely, it can rather it can be concluded very safely that the use of metal objects was very limited during Rig Vedic times, uh, whether it was iron or it was copper or bronze. And the same in fact is true for later Vedic times as well. Now, uh, Another important aspect of Rig Vedic economy is existence of Loptri. Loptri was basically war booty uh, whenever a tribe used to go to uh, used to go for a war against another tribe or even if there were intra tribal wars. The group that brought the war booty it consisted of cattle horse, women and even slaves. So, it was a war booty that was brought after winning a war and it was called Loptri which was redistributed in the whole tribe. Now, redistribution was very significant, very important during Rig Vedic times because we have frequent reference of the terms like ans or bhaga which are parts basically and these were redistributed. Now, these were again redistributed through tribal assemblies like Sabha, like Vidath or a Gana in which of course, women also played a very significant role. And again uh, as in the case of uh, as in the case of agricultural production where the chief and the priest did not participate directly in the production forces process, but they obtained a larger share here too in redistribution of lobe 3 probably the chief and the priest also obtained a larger share. Now, another important aspect of Rig Vedic economy is Bali. Bali was basically a voluntary offering by the people of the tribe to his chief. But there are certain instances in which it can be suggested that Bali was probably for collected forcibly as well from the tribes which were hostile to the victor tribe or the winning tribe. So, for some people, for the people who are hostile to the winning tribe or to the chief, Bali can be said to be 
compulsory offering, but for the people of the tribe who were friendly to the chief, it was a voluntary offering, which was given by the people of the tribe to their kings as a gift, and it might include cattle, dairy, uh, cattle, dairy produce, and grain as well. Uh, so, these are some of the important features or aspects of Rig Vedic economy, which was rudimentary in nature. It can be suggested that the economy was just taking shape, but this is a picture that is obtained from Rig Veda. Archaeological remains are very few. However, it cannot be suggested that since the Aryans who authored the Rig Veda and the Aryans who uh, practiced what you call uh, cattle rearing predominantly, we are the only people indulging in a, any type of economic activity, because we have no reference, we have no mention of indigenous people who are living side by side along with the Aryans in the contemporary liter literature, either in the form of archaeological sources or in the contemporary literature and what type of economy they professed, what type of agricultural activities they indulged in, we have no information altogether. But whatever information that we have on the basis of the Rig Veda and very meager archaeological sources, it is suggested that it was an economy that was predominantly pastoral in nature. It was at the level of beginning, it was at the level of rudimentary economic structure. No. So, on the basis of such an economy, a society that can be seen or the so a society that can be visualized will have to be essentially a tribal society. Now, again the society that we can discuss for Rig Vedic period is the society that is seen from the eyes of the Aryans only. We have no information about the indigenous society and whatever information that we have about the society is from the perspective of the Aryans or from the perspective of the Brahmanical literature, most important Brahmanical literature, the Rig Veda. So, it was a society because it was semi nomadic society, because it was a pastoral society. So, it was a society that was basically tribal in nature and it was based on kinship relations. Now, such a society uh, was uh, in fact, patriarchal society, the basic social unit in such a system was the family uh, and the family consisted, the family consisted of large number of people. It consisted of the householder, his wife, his children, the parents of the husband, the parents of the wife. So, it was a large family that was living together and it was the basic unit of production as well as consumption. If you look, if we look at the uh, what you call kinship terminology during Rig Vedic times, it was simple because we have direct terms only for father, mother, brother, sister, son and daughter. Now, apart from other a host of other relations like nephews, grandchildren, cousins, etcetera, etcetera, they were all referred to as Naptri. Now, a larger unit because since the basic unit of the society was the family, a larger unit than this society and then this basic unit was the vis, which may mean probably may mean a clan 
and its importance is reflected from its mention for 171 times in the Rig Veda, because it has been mentioned for 171 times in the Rig Veda and on the basis of it, it has been suggested by some scholars that it was a very important social unit. But another unit Jana is referred 275 times in the Rig Veda. Now, the exact relationship between the Jana and Visa is not clear, but uh, it seems that uh, probably Visa included Jana and with the settled uh, with the development of settled agriculture gradually what happens that uh, this Jana is being converted into Janapada and every Janapada is named after a king of the region. Now, coming down to the social structure, uh, the much talked about and uh, widely prevalent the fourfold Varna structure, the fourfold Varna system was absent during Rig Vedic times. The society was basically divided on the basis of occupations, and we have three different social groups which are divided on the basis of occupation. It was of the Purohit or the priest, the Rajan or the chief and Vis or the common people. So, there were only three groups and what is more significant that there was considerable amount of social mobility within this social system, because what we have that the members of one family could indulge into different professions, which of course was not possible during post Vedic, later Vedic and post Vedic times. Because we have reference of a family in which the son was a musician, the father was a physician or a Vaidya and the mother of the son used to grind corns in the houses of others. Now, as far as origin of fourfold word structure is concerned, it is witness, it is seen in the Rig Veda only, but since it is it is there in the tenth mandal of the Rig Veda, so it is a development that took place during uh, it is a development that took place during uh, what do you call later Vedic times and not during Rig Vedic times. Now, apart from uh, these internal divisions of the Rig Vedic society, there are certain references of uh, Das, Dasyu and Panis as well and these people are projected in the Rig Veda as being hostile to the Aryans. Dasa are basically uh, in later literature also referred to as slave and Dasyu are described rich in cattle. It is suggested in the Rig Veda that the Dasyu used to live in Pura or forts and they were described as dark complexant, snub nosed, they used to worship phallus, they used to follow non-Aryan practices. And so, the kind of social practices that was followed by the Dasas was not like by the Aryans. Probably the Aryans were trying to maintain the purity of their blood and since the Aryans were fair, the Aryans were sharp nosed, the Aryans were people with the straight hairs, long hairs and the local indigenous pe people were uh, dark colored, snub nosed with protruded lips you know and then with curly hairs. So, the Aryans wanted to maintain the purity of blood and they wanted to avoid any type of contact with the uh, non-Aryan population, the indigenous population and the Dasyus the are considered as people following a different cultural practices altogether. So, the Dasyus are seemed in a bad light in the Rig Veda, they are projected as 
hostile to the Aryans. Now, as far as Dasas are concerned, because Dasas seem to have certain connection with the Aryans. Of course, they too are said to be hostile to the Aryans, but there it seems that there was some connection between the Aryans and the Dasa population of indigenous uh, indigenous groups. Reason being that two kings, two Aryan kings, Divodas and Sudas, they have their names ending in Das, and probably they had some Dasa connections. So they are not seen as uh, I mean, they are not seen with as uh, humiliation as compared to the Dasyus, because we have frequent references against the Dasyus as Dasyu Hatya and or killing of Dasas, where there is no such reference, uh, killing of Dasyus, where there is no such reference for killing of Dasa by the Aryans. Now, as far as Pani are concerned, they are again supposed to be uh, people with a different culture. Uh, they were rich in cattle treasure, they did not perform sacrifices, they spoke a different language, it is suggest, I mean all these things have been suggested in the Rig Veda and they had cultural differences with the Aryans. So, there were very frequent conflicts between Panis and uh, Aryas, Aryans as well, because we have frequent references of Aryans attacking the forts of the local people. and. Uh, looting the cattle and uh, cattle and cows of the local population of Panis. And in this context, probably uh, the battle of Dasaraj king, Dasaraj king in which probably both Aryans and non-Aryans fought together or rather each other against each other and with each other is a very significant uh, uh, story in the Rig Vedic society. Now, apart from these various social groups in the Rig Vedic period, if we look at the position of women during Rig Vedic times, it has been suggested that the status of women during Rig Vedic times has been a matter of debate. Because what we generally uh, find in contemporary secondary literature modern secondary literature on ancient Indian history on the basis of Rig Veda, there is a tendency to idealize the position of women during Rig Vedic times. And over a period of times, it has been suggested that there was a gradual deterioration in the position of women. Now, as far as Rig Vedic period is concerned, the people who uh, try to highlight the importance or the uh, better position of women in the Rig Vedic society. They try to suggest that uh, there were late marriages, the women were uh, getting marriages at the age of 15, 16, which is of course not very good age from the modern, pers modern perspective, but from the perspective of ancient Indian history, it is fairly good age to get married at. Then the women had freedom to choose their life partners as well. So uh, there was considerable freedom in the society and women had such rights which of course was not available during later times in ancient Indian period. Then it is suggested that women used to participate in political activities as well uh, because it has been suggested that of the four uh, committees of Rig Vedic times, Sabha, Samiti, Vidat and Gan, there were two committees, one was Sabha and the other, twa, the, and the other was Vidat, in which uh, women had their representation and women used to participate. So, it has been suggested that women also enjoyed certain political rights, which was of course not available to the women during later times. And then uh, it is suggested that they had access to education because some of the hymns of the Rig Veda have been composed by some women seers like Ghosa, Apala, Viswara, etcetera, etcetera. So, 
on the basis of these examples it has been suggested that women had access to education as well during rig vedic times and it was also it is also suggested that the women had very significant role to play uh, in the ritual tradition of rig vedic times as well so uh, on the basis of all this evidence it it is suggested that the position of women during rig vedic times was quite well very good but in fact the reality seems to be more complex now evidence is there but reality of course seems to be more complex now as far as political participation of women is concerned women of course had the right to par, uh, right to be a member of sabha and vidhat but if we look at the rights and duties and the powers of these committees as compared to uh, samiti which was a committee of only adult male citizens what you find that it was I mean the committees like sabha and vidhat were just ceremonial committees which had hardly any significance on the contemporary political structure similarly if we look at the uh, evidence of their access to educational tradition and if we go by the number of the hymns in the rigveda hardly 6% of the hymns of the rigveda were composed by these women so on the basis of it it cannot be suggested that they enjoyed a very exalted status in the society or their in position in the society was very significant because of course we have no prejudices against girl children in the rigveda it's true but what we find in the rigveda that people used to pray for the birth of sons and in fact brave sons sur veera putra why because a son only can go for war and he can bring lopatri and all the things that was required that was the requirement of the contemporary economic situation if we look at the deities of the vedic pantheon again what you find that most of the significant vedic deities were males only for example indra agni varun etc etc of course we have certain references of female deities as well like uh, usha like agni like ratri like prithvi saraswati etc etc but such deities were not significant in vedic pantheon in fact such deities were hardly of any relevance or did not have any direct impact on the contemporary people or on the contemporary society then uh, again if we look at contemporary literature we of course we have references of women as uh, composer of vedic hymns we have references of women uh taking part in uh, sabha and taking part in the proceedings of sabha and vidhat we have references for their participation in ritual tradition because no ritual tradition was complete until unless it was accompanied by the sacrificer along with her wife in all these things were there but if we look at the number of people or number of women from the point of view of the category of people who enjoyed some status in the society we have no references at all we have no reference of any women being a chief of the tribe or rajan we have no reference of any women being a priest or purohit because it was a society that was patriarchal in nature and such a society i mean this position such a positions were not enjoyed by the women in the contemporary society now if apart from it if we look at some other examples 
uh, what you will find that the position of women was not so good at it has been suggested by some of the scholars on the basis of Rig Veda. Because we have evidence of polygamy that is a man having more than one wife in the Rig Veda. We have evidence of polyandry that is uh, women having more than one husband in the Rig Vedic period. So, such a situation does not speak of a good status of women during Rig Vedic times. Now, there are some scholars who suggest that uh, the women had the right of remarriage after the death of their husband. So, it has been interpreted by some scholars that there was widow remarriage during Rig Vedic period. In fact, it is based on a practice called Niyoga or the practice of Levirate on the basis of which some people have uh, suggested that there was the practice of widow remarriage during Rig Vedic times. But in fact, it was not widow remarriage. It was a practice through which the wife of rather the widow of a person was allowed to have physical relation or was allowed to cohabitate with the younger brother of her husband till a male child was born. Now, here too it can be seen that there was some prejudice against the women because this relationship came to an end after the birth of a male child. This relationship was allowed only till a male child was born. If a female child is born, the relationship was to continue and if a male child is born, the, rel the relationship is ended. So, what is significant in the society is that the birth of a male child and of course, it has been interpreted as as, as um, widow remarriage by some of the scholars, but it was not widow remarriage in fact at all. So, what we find that there seems to be certain degree of social stratification and this social stratification was based on along gender lines. Samiti which was the most powerful political body of the Rig Vedic times was consisting of only male adult members. It was the body which used to advise the king on important functions and the king was bound to accept the advice of the Samiti. Whereas, whereas Sabha and Gan as far as Sabha and Vidat is concerned of which the women happen to be. जी नमस्कार कृपया अपना सवाल पूछिए नमस्कार सर जी सवाल पूछिए सर माय क्वेश्चन इज दैट व्हाट इज द मेजर रिफॉर्म्स वी कैन सी इन अर्ली वेदिक पीरियड इन लेटर वेदिक पीरियड मेजर रिफॉर्म इन रिफॉर्म्स चेंज वी वी ऑब्जर्व इन ऑब्जर्व ड्यूरिंग वेदिक पीरियड ओके सर ओके ओके रिफॉर्म्स ही इज टॉकिंग अबाउट द रिफॉर्म्स इन अर्ली वेदिक पीरियड्स See, in After fact, society, uh, discussing this, we will discuss. Of course, uh, uh, hmm. just we are I was just, I was just uh, finishing it. Minutes, I was just uh, finishing it only hmm. by saying that, in fact, there uh, is a tendency to idealize women, but their reality is complex, and it is quite obvious that there was some uh, biasness against women. There was a social stratification, and this social stratification was based along gender lines which is very clearly discernible during Rig Vedic times. Thank you. Now, as far as this. He was talking about reforms, reforms. but the reform as we mean right now, we cannot take it to that period. That is why there is some confusion I think. To see sir, there is I mean. Of course, there was, was some kind of, of course, it or was it was a tribal society mm -hmm. eh, and it since it was a tribal society which was not being attacked by any other foreign elements or any other foreign culture. Okay. Of course, they were afraid of the presence of indigenous people, but I mean as far as Rig Veda is concerned and since that is the only source there is no mm -hmm. 
there is not seen any attempt of any kind of reform okay. rather it it a appears society it, follows it the society appears. that was evolving not yes, we can't of course. say that it, it appears being governed that by a state or some course, other agent so they can make a reform there was not so no proper state yeah, system i think what were the uh, wrong thing we were doing they were taking uh, corrective measures to remove over no of course measures. because what you find that during in the rigveda it mm -hmm. was not a crime less society Okay. It was not a crime-free society, mm -hmm. but at the same time, you do not find any mechanism to mm -hmm. redress the criminal activities. There is no uh, system Arbitration. of judiciary mm -hmm. during Rig Vedic times. Okay. There is no system of judiciary हाँ क्योंकि वो एक इवोल्यूशनरी सोसाइटी था मतलब रिफॉर्म से हमारा संदर्भ अगर ये है कि समाज में अगर कुछ बुराइयां हैं तो बुराइयां थी हर तरह की बुराइयां थी समाज के अंदर लेकिन उन बुराइयों को दूर करने के लिए रिग्वेदी काल में किसी तरह के कानूनी व्यवस्था का प्रावधान नहीं देखने को मिलता है पूरे रिग्वेद में जो मैकेनिज्म आज का है स्टेट कोई जुडिशियरी सिस्टम नहीं था स्टेट ऑफ कोर्स आज अभी इवॉल्व किया नहीं था एक चीफडम था जो कि ट्राइबल पॉलिटी का फीचर होता है चीफडम था ट्राइब का चीफ हुआ करता था जो ट्राइबल चीफ हुआ करता था जो कि नॉर्मली इलेक्टेड होता था लेकिन बाद में हेरिडिटरी हो गया था जो कि उसको असिस्ट करने के लिए उसके पुरोहित हुआ करते थे लोग आपस में बैठते थे और उसका चीजों को जो हां वंस जो था वो क्लैनशिप के बेसिस पे जो ट्राइबल सोसाइटी फंक्शन करती है उसके बेसिस पे वो ट्राइब का चीफ वो अपना पावर ड्रॉ करता था अपने क्लैन से महाराष्ट्र से दर्शक हैं उनका सवाल लेते हैं जी नमस्कार जी सवाल पूछिए हां हेलो सर जी सवाल पूछिए हां मैं मारे गणेश सर जी जी सवाल पूछिए तो वैदिक तो आपने डॉक्टर किया था ना जी जी सवाल पूछिए वो डेफिनेशन बताएं आप आपकी आवाज नहीं आ रहे माफ करिएगा पहले अपना टीवी का वॉल्यूम कम कर लें उसके बाद सवाल पूछें सर मैं बोल रहा था कि वो प्लास्टिक सर्जरी हेलो जी प्लास्टिक सर्जरी प्लास्टिक सर्जरी की जानकारी बता ना जी प्लास्टिक हां हम लोग मंथ के अंत में चिकित्सा पर बात करेंगे उस दिन आप ये सवाल पूछ सकते हैं अभी आप रिग्वेदिक सोसाइटी से जुड़ी हुई उस समय क्या आर्थिक स्थिति थी क्या समाज था समाज व्यवस्था था उससे जुड़ी अगर सवाल पूछ सकते हैं तो हम लोग आंसर करेंगे और चिकित्सा से जुड़ी मंथ के एंड में लास्ट वीक में हम लोग करते हैं उसमें आप सवाल पूछ सकते हैं ठीक है धन्यवाद तो रिफॉर्म के बारे में हम लोग बात करें तो उनको मतलब एक क्लियर हो जाना चाहिए कि उस समय कोई ऐसी भी व्यवस्था नहीं थी या स्टेट या जिस तरह के एक ऑर्गेनाइज सेक्टर की बात करते हैं इंस्टीट्यूशन जो उनको कहे कि इस तरह के अगर आप करेंगे तो आप के आप सुधार हो सकता है या ऐसे किया इस प्रकार की व्यवस्था नहीं था वो ट्राइबल सोसाइटी था आप समाज ही अभी तक सेफ नहीं ले सका था पूरी तरह से क्रिस्टलाइज नहीं हो सका था जिसको आप समाज कहते हैं क्योंकि समाज जनरली आप तब मानते हैं जब चार वर्णों का उदय हो जाता है जो कि उत्तर वैदिक काल में होता है वैदिक काल में इंदौर से फिर एक सवाल है जी सवाल लेते हैं नमस्कार जी सवाल पूछिए नमस्कार सर जी सवाल पूछिए सर मैं जिगवेत के बारे में कितने मंडल है और इनमें क्या क्या है बात है क्या ये संक्षिप्त में जानने का ये माफ करिए पहले अपना टीवी का वॉल्यूम कम कर लें फिर सवाल पूछिए जी सर मैं जानना चाहता हूं जी कि जिगवेत में मंडल और उसके बारे में थोड़ी बहुत संक्षिप्त जानकारी चाहिए जिगवेत के बारे में ओके okay, मंडल और जो दूसरे देखिए ऋग्वेद एक ग्रंथ है जो कि दस मंडलों में बटा हुआ है okay. मंडल संख्या एक से दस तक जैसे कि महाभारत पर्वों में बटा हुआ है रामायण कांडों में बटा हुआ है वैसे ऋग्वेद मंडलों में बटा हुआ है ऋग्वेद में दस मंडल हैं इनमें मंडल संख्या दो से सात तक मूल ऋग्वेदिक काल के मंडल हैं जब मैं ऋग्वेदिक काल के मंडल कह रहा हूं तो बा इसका मतलब है कि बाकी मंडल यानी कि एक आठ नौ और दस ऋग्वेद में बाद में जोड़े गए हैं ये जोड़े गए हैं उत्तर वैदिक काल में इन आठ मंडलों में दो से सात तक जो मंडल हैं ये मूल मंडल माने जाते हैं इसके अलावा मंडल संख्या नौ में बेसिकली सोम देवता के प्रति जितने भी समर्पित श्लोक हैं बाकी मंडलों में उनको एक जगह एकत्र कर दिया गया है इसलिए मंडल नौ में कुछ नया नहीं है जो ऑलरेडी बाकी मंडलों में है वो मंडल नौ में है और मंडल एक आठ और दस 
वो बाद में जोड़े गए हैं ओके जब एक कॉन्क्रीट फॉर्म सोसाइटी ले लिया है या जब एक आ, सोसाइटी से कुछ लेना देना नहीं है बेसिकली ये भारतीय जो साहित्य है ऐतिहासिक साहित्य धार्मिक साहित्य उसकी एक विशेषता या कमी जो भी आप कह लें है कि जो कुछ भी लिखा गया है उसमें चीज़ें बाद में जोड़ी जाती रही हैं तो ये कहना कि ये ग्रंथ इस काल का है पूरा का पूरा सही नहीं है यही बात लागू होती है कौटिल्य के अर्थशास्त्र पे भी जो कि पूरा का पूरा मौर्य काल का नहीं है उसमें भी बाद में चीज़ें जोड़ी गई हैं और ये पूरे प्राचीन भारतीय इतिहास के महाभारत के साथ भी ये समस्या रही है रामायण के साथ भी ये समस्या रही है तो सभी भारतीय साहित्यों की ऐतिहासिक या धार्मिक साहित्य समस्याएं एक इतिहासकारों के लिए समस्याएं हैं और आप विशेषताएं कह सकते हैं दर्शक हैं उनका सवाल लेते हैं जी नमस्कार सवाल पूछिए जी सवाल पूछिए सर ये कह रहा था कि जो भी ये टॉपिक चल रहा है ऋग्वेद के बारे में बता रहे थे तो मान लो कोई प्रश्न आ जाए की बीस शब्दों के अंदर ऋग्वेद के बारे में बताना है तो ऋग्वेद में क्या चीज बताएंगे बीस शब्दों के अंदर कहाँ प्रश्न आ जाए बीस शब्दों के अंदर ऋग्वेद के सिविल सेवा के अंदर बीस शब्दों के प्रश्न पूछ देंगे बीस शब्दों में इसका उत्तर दीजिए तो बीस ऋग्वेद के बारे में बीस शब्दों में बताना है तो उसमें क्या चीज इंक्लूड की जाए अगर खाली ऋग्वेद के बारे में आप बीस शब्दों में आपसे पूछा जाए तो आप कह सकते हैं की दुनिया का सबसे प्राचीनतम धर्म ग्रंथ है जो की दस मंडलों में बटा हुआ है इसमें एक हजार सत्रह श्लोक हैं ये श्लोक विभिन्न देवी देवताओं को समर्पित है और इन श्लोकों के आधार पर हम ऋग्वेदिक काल की सामाजिक आर्थिक और राजनीतिक स्थिति का वर्णन कर सकते हैं इनका प्रश्न हम लोग समझ सकते हैं शायद शॉर्ट आंसर टाइप के जो क्वेश्चन आते हैं कॉम्पिटेटिव एग्जाम में उसके लिए लेकिन इसमें एक और आपको ध्यान देना पड़ेगा इस पर आपकी जो उस समय लेखनी क्षमता है उस पर निर्भर करता है कैसे आप एडजेक्टिव और अन्य जो चीज़ें हैं उसको खत्म करके आप इसको जैसे आप सपोज करिए कोई मन सेहरा या किसी और जगह के पूछ रहा है तो ये तो मालूम है कि यहाँ पे है लेकिन आपको विशेष बातें कुछ ऐड करना है तो आपको देखना होगा किस बात को हम छोड़ दें और किस बात को हाँ, बिल्कुल नहीं छोड़े तो ये आपके ऊपर निर्भर करता है प्रैक्टिस से आएगा कैसे हम लोग सिंथेसिस थ्रू एक सेंटेंस को फ्रेश बनाते हैं फ्रेश करते हैं ठीक है अच्छे क्वेश्चन हैं इस पर बहुत सारे लोगों को दिक्कत होता है जी, जी, तो और जो इसके मूल तत्व हैं वो छूट जाते हैं दूसरी चीज़ तो लिखने का तो दो पेज तीन पेज लिख सकता है लेकिन जो मूल तत्व हैं वो नहीं लिख सकते मूल तत्व आपको इंट्रोड्यूस करना है इंट्रोडक्शन देना है मुझे लगा मैंने जो कुछ कहा भी शब्दों में कहा या नहीं पता थोड़ा ज्यादा हो गया लेकिन चलेगा हो गया महाराष्ट्र से दर्शन का सवाल लेते हैं जी नमस्कार सवाल पूछिए हाँ नमस्कार सर जी मैं भरजागिर से बोल रहा हूँ गणेश सत्पुके जी हाँ सर वो जो यजुर्वेद सामवेद अथर्ववेद वो तीन वेद है ना चार वेद है जो हाँ चार वेद वो चार वेद में हमारे भारतीय परंपरा की क्या माय थी जुड़ी हुई हम जानने की मेरी उत्सुकता हो रही है ओके वेदों में भारतीय परंपरा का क्या मूल तत्व है कैसे उसको हम समझें ये प्रश्न है क्योंकि हमारी परंपरा वहीं से शुरू होती है कुछ लोग उसी को अभी बोलते हैं कि वहीं शुरू तो वही सब कुछ देखिए बहुत सारी चीज़ें हैं जो कि वेदों में जो देखने को मिलती हैं वो आज तक आपके रीति रिवाजों में उसका अनुसरण होता रहता है बहुत कुछ तो नहीं कहा जाता है उदाहरण के लिए ऋग्वेद में सिर्फ एक अनाज का जिक्र मिलता है यव यव को जव माना गया है बार्ली और आज भी आप ध्यान देते होंगे कि पूजा में जब हवन दिया जाता है तो उसमें अनाजों के साथ जव जरूर मिलाया जाता है इसी तरह ऋग्वेद में कपास का जिक्र नहीं मिलता है ऊन का जिक्र मिलता है और आज भी पूजा करने के लिए जो चटाई लोग बनाते हैं स्पेशली वो ऊन की बनी होती है कपास की बनी हुई वो चटाई का इस्तेमाल या जूट की बनी हुई चटाई का इस्तेमाल नहीं किया जाता है पूजा के लिए तो कुछ ऐसी चीजें हैं जो कि परंपरागत लेते हैं और परंपरा पर कैसे वेद से परंपरा जो निकली उसके लेक्चर में और ये बेसिकली वो बाद के वेदों की बात कर रहे हैं जो की उत्तर वैदिक काल का है जिसके बारे में हम लोग कल अगले लेक्चर में चलिए पहले सभी जो लोग पूछे उनको धन्यवाद और जो उन लोगों ने लेक्चर सुना उनको भी धन्यवाद और कल और हम लोग विस्तृत चर्चा करेंगे मित्रों इन शब्दों के साथ आज के व्याख्यान को हम विराम देते हैं आप सबको एक बार फिर से धन्यवाद और डॉक्टर ओ पी सिंह को भी बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू सर